professional Olympians. All right, five minutes after 8 o'clock. Do you realize the beautiful place you live? Just look outside right now. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful thing? You know? It's gorgeous. Maybe it rained a lot, but but it's, it's always beautiful. Even, even when it rains, it's beautiful here. Yeah. It really is. We do live in a beautiful... We forget. We forget. There's a reason people come here. There's a yeah. reason we have all these uh, tourists... And it's not Disney, because people were coming to this state way... Be- in fact, Disney is here because of the tourists. Sure. Not to say the tourists don't come here because of Disney, but Disney built here because we're, we were already attracting people because, yeah, of, Gardens, because of this. Yeah, Springs and Silver Springs. No, no, I'm talking about this, this weather. This oh, yeah. this is why they come mm-hmm. here. Yep, people love the weather. Good morning, Galen. Galen Yunos on the phone from Life South Community Blood Center. Good morning, Galen. Hey, good morning, Larry, Robin. How are y'all? Pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Doing really well. Hey, uh, let's not forget that Henry Flagler created tourism in the uh, in the state of Florida because of the railroad. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But no, God created tourism, I think, because of the sunshine, because of the weather, because of the mm-hmm. beaches. Well, if you really want to, if you, I, you know, we could always say that uh, Moses was really the first tourist. I mean, he <laughs> led a huge group. Exactly. He didn't really know where he was going. And he never really got to where he wanted to go, but uh, he led everybody else to the promised land. Yeah, he did. He did. And everybody thought that was just going to be filled with milk and honey. Yeah, they were wrong. But, was. But, for but here, but here, I mean, I mean, people have been coming here, um, and, and I think all the tourist attractions, that, any of them that you can name, became into existence because of the uh, tourists. Absolutely. That's what I think. Absolutely. That, well, I mean, you look at the uh, Flagler Hotel over in St. Augustine, and... That was built because Henry Flagler wanted uh, a place for people to, to take on his railroad to enjoy the weather. There you go. Absolutely. I didn't know that, yeah. but that makes sense. I, I mean, that big bull that we used to have in Ocala years and years and years ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh, I, I, I meant to bring up an old map that I saw. We've yeah. got a segment later on. I'm going to do that later on. Mm-hmm. I found a website where you can look at old maps. Mm-hmm. And did uh, Oh, gosh. Oh, downtown Ocala was... The, what was it called? The t- Oh, gosh. Uh... There, there was a hotel downtown with an Indian name. Oh, yeah, I forget what Oh, it's I'll, I'll bring it up later on. What, th- what time's our little 10 minute slot we 11.05. have? 11.05. 11.05, I'll do that. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I think the big bull <laughs> came into existence because the guy who owned the land said, you know, there's a, thousands of people driving past my, my land every day. I want them to come in here and bring me some money. Yeah, right, right. So we got the big bull out there. Are you talking about the hotel? No, I, I kind of mixed up two different things when I was talking. Right I don't here, know uh, what you're talking about with a bull. Okay, on 441, between mm-hmm. Ocala and Bellevue, there used to be a sign for a place that had the world's largest bull. Yeah, back in the 60s. Do you remember that, or, or is it before in your the time? the 70s. Uh, no, I don't remember it. Oh, really? Before Galen's time. But, but my point is, that, okay, well, just trust me, there was. I think you, there's like a, a skateboard place there now, I think. Yeah. Okay. Where the kids go skateboarding yep. and stuff. And, and I think... In my, I mean, I have no idea. I never did an interview with the guy who who did that. But I would imagine what happened is he's looking out his door and he says, "There are thousands of cars going down this road, all mm-hmm. heading someplace, for, and they're all Yankees from someplace else. Yeah, they're coming down here to get away from the snow. I got a big bull. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to put a sign up and call it the world's <laughs> biggest bull, and have people come in and look at it." There you go. And charge people 50 cents or whatever it is. And he made money. And so that's that's tourism right there. Yeah. Right? Just like the caverns on 441. They put out that sign and they said, come visit the caverns. They did? You could go in the caverns? Yeah, it was, it was across the street from the bull. It wasn't that oh, okay. far away. But, I, but I, I, I think the tourism was first. How did we get onto this? How did this happen? Because you, because you, you said why people come to Florida. Oh, that's right. It's the weather. The way it looks and not right the now. Because the way it looks right now, in August, is not that much different than the way it looks probably right now up in Maine. Mm-hmm. But give it about three months, it won't look like this in Maine, <laughs> and it, and it and it will look like this here. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Um, how is the blood supply? Uh, we're doing okay, Larry. Doing okay. We uh, we we still need a negative and. Um, we need uh, O negative and B negative, and uh, we need A positive as well, platelet donors. So okay. that's where we're at. 
thank Penn Flooring for sponsoring this segment. Without their sponsorship, we wouldn't be able to have these important discussions. And always remember that in the course of the visits we do with Galen, even though the topic changes, you are always invited to call with questions about blood donations and blood products, etc. Uh, thank Penn Flooring for making that possible. They provide quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. They can make your home look better from the floor up. Visit their spacious showroom and see what they have available. They are at 1201 Southwest 17th Street. 1201 Southwest 17th Street. There's a bridge right there. as a landmark. It's the McKay-Williams Bridge. Mm -hmm. It's not labeled that well, but one day it will be. And there'll be a big sign. The McKay-Williams Bridge. Yep. <laughs> yes, it will. There should be a sign. sign a it's sign big a enough to, sign now. to... It's a small sign, mm -hmm. but you should be able to read it. You should know. Everybody should know that's the McKay-Williams mm -hmm. Bridge. Yep. And thank Penn Flooring for uh, sponsoring this. So the, the topic today, Galen, I, I neglected to mention it in my intro this morning. Uh, the top 10 things that we mistakenly think will make us happier. Oh, okay. The yeah. top 10 things. But before we do that, I, I want to ask you about the school lunch issue. Did, did you happen to hear what we were talking about? Uh, I did, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, I mean, what's your thought on that? You know, I I, I think uh, you're giving her the benefit of the doubt with the uh, with with saying it was the best of intention. A lot of people came out when this was what's going on and saying, you know what, this what this isn't going to work, and, right. and it had nothing to do with the choices. It had everything to do with the cost. You know, at one time she wanted everything to be uh, locally grown, yeah. organic, nothing, you know, no preservatives, uh, and and that's so expensive. Um, and, uh, you go to the grocery store and look at something that's got the word organic on it compared to a can. I mean, it's 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 tremendously uh, cost difference. So yeah, I, I I disagree. I think a lot of people knew this was coming. Um, it took a it took a lot of toll. Locally, I didn't really see much of a difference in the lunches. Um, I mean, my kids eat lunch at school and uh, one of the things I'm really glad they did here locally was at elementary schools they gave them free breakfast and I, I thought that was a great idea just to get in the habit of these kids eating breakfast and and I believe in uh, you know a lot of our kids go hungry when there's no school and so I, I, I believe in having a summer lunch program at, at some of our schools mm -hmm. um, I just don't think the answer is all organic no. Guess what? I mean, most most your generation, Larry, you and Robin, didn't grow up on organic food. You, you just did. I mean, it's not. It's, that's not. That's not what's creating obesity in, in our in our kids. What's creating obesity is, like you said, a lot of the, you know, all these. Every drink you have has a high level of sugar, and you know, the kids aren't as active as they once were. And parents are okay with that. That that's a bigger issue. Right, right. Um, so, in 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 your statement that you disagree with my giving her the best of intentions, that's that's just a yes. that is my thought. I, I would imagine that that sure. was that she had good intentions. But uh, but at the beginning of this, when this was first being talked about, I did say I have a hard time believing high school kids will go along with this. Yeah. I, I did say that uh, elementary school kids probably have no choice. No, they don't. But, uh, well, except for the, the, the bagged lunch to bring into school, which, mm -hmm. the, of course, that was shot out of the water by that one story uh, in the Carolinas, I think. But I, I was referring to high school kids. I, I, in the beginning, when this first came down, I said, high school, they're never going to do this. Mm -mm. You're never going to. Well, and you, your point about the cost, what didn't even come to mind. What came to mind is my high school days. When I would, I would leave, the, I would leave the school and go to go to a pizza place. Absolutely. Here's the issue I have with the whole thing. It's and it's this elitist type attitude that I know what you need better than you know what you need. I'm smarter than you. Um, I'm going to do this for you because you're not educated enough or enlightened enough to eat the right thing. So I'm going to take every other option away from you and only give you what I think is appropriate for you. That's the issue I have with the whole thing. Yeah, I, I, I mean, when you go to these schools, when you, and, and we deal with a lot, a lot with the with the kids' marathon and things like that. These the, everybody who works in that school cares about the kids, and and those even you know when they plan the meals, they're they're trying to give them a balanced meal that the kids will eat. And anybody who's had a child, they're all picky eaters. They all love certain things and they all hate each hate certain things just like adults do, and their job is to get those children fed. 
And uh, if that means we're going to have chicken nuggets today so that they eat the chicken nuggets, then that's what the kids are going to, are, are, that's what the school lunches are going to provide. Right, right, right. So I, 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 but, and, and there's got to be that balance. There has to be that balance. Yeah, well, if I was in the room when this was all being discussed, I would have said the same exact thing I would have said if they were proposing a law against smoking. I would have said, I know you have good intentions, but I don't think it's going to work. Just like I don't think a law against alcohol would work, and, and that's been proven in history. Exactly. I think yeah. ca- campaigns on, these, on, on human behavior changes. You want to change human behavior? Use a campaign. You know, get, get some pop star to say, you know what? I, I decided not mm-hmm. to smoke anymore, and I feel so much better. You know, you know what? I started to eat kale, kale chips instead of potato chips, and I'm, I'm so much better. Yeah. You know. and, and that's and, and and if you look at it, what what do we do to cl- to really create, uh, you know, the pollution, you know, and and littering? I remember very distinctly because my son and I we were talking about this the other day when when I was young in the early seventies. After we would go to McDonald's or Burger King because there wasn't a McDonald's, there was a Burger Chef. We would put all mm, the garbage in one bag and throw that bag out the window. You couldn't imagine doing that now. You know, the whole car would be horrified that you did it. But thanks to that crying Indian who was from Italy, um, you know, it became <laughs> it, it became taboo to do that. Was he really? And now, if you look at it, with with like Bob the Builder, with recycling, and right, right, all of the cartoons, or that's the way to go about it. That's I mean, right. Every time I look up, I see, uh, you know. This is Obama on Nickelodeon or Disney Channel or one of those channels talking about how to eat right. Right. Yeah. That's where it should start. That's exactly you right. Don't mandate it, right? You make it a part of the social setting, like you said. And and I think that's where the difference is, is because she mandated that said these have to be organic, we have right. to do this, that's we right. have to do that. Right, right. And that's that's the elitist attitude that I have a problem with. And I, I don't disagree with that at all. That's 100% the way I think. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't change my feeling that the lady had a good intention. And she just didn't, there wasn't somebody in the room contesting her. There wasn't somebody in the room saying, look, I know you mean well. However, the, the nature of children, this isn't going to happen. Maybe you can convince, maybe you can force the, the younger kids. Mm-hmm. But the older kids who have cars or friends with cars... Right. Or who have a school close enough to a deli or or, or convenience store or whatever, mm-hmm. <laughs> they're just gonna. It's not gonna work. No. Well, yeah, I, I yeah, I, I think that's the problem, though. If you're surrounded by people who only tell you yes, then you're never going to accomplish much. Yeah. That's in, right. in in my world, just to compare it to my world, in my world, we argue over everything. Because you have to, because you have to vet. Well, your and that idea. And, and that and that is the 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 founding fathers' wisdom in in allowing us Absolutely. to have freedom of speech. The the very Absolutely. fact, you know, when we when we um, make fun of a president or or we we have these discussions where you know the president is not the king, we don't bow down and, and worship him, regardless of the party. That is a beautiful thing. So many people don't like it, but the truth is. If you didn't have that, you wouldn't have anybody making you think something different just so you could consider the other side of what of any given story. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. that's right. That's right. Uh, I, so I, you know, I'm I'm not surprised that the lunch program changed. Uh, you know, and and will continue to change. And I, I'm just surprised that uh, nobody fought it earlier. And and I know there are a lot of people who came out against it. A lot of people came out against it. So uh, the, it was the federal government; they couldn't fight it. One of the related, one no, of the, one, and one of the related stories was that uh, the school lunch rules have created a black market for salt in schools. Can you imagine that? Yeah, I, I love that. that. The kids, I love that. Well, you want some salt? I got some salt. I'll, I'll, I'll give yeah, it to you for right. for twenty five cents. Well, guess yeah. what? <laughs> guess what? We live in a capitalistic society, and our children That's are right. very capitalistic. Right. And uh, they're going to find a way if they want it. And what you're making it then is this sexy kind of a, oh, I'm not supposed to do this, therefore I'm going to do it kind of a thing. Right. Especially as right. you mentioned in the high school right. and in the middle schools to a certain degree. So, you know, I got one in high school and I got one in middle school and uh, I understand how that works. But, but, I, I, there was a story, gosh, who was the guy? He was a young guy. He was very fast talking and, and he was, he'd always did these infomercials about how to make money. Oh, the guy in the green suit with the question marks? 
I don't remember. He was kind of a good-looking guy. Uh, he almost reminded me of Casey from Casey and the Sunshine Band. Mm-hmm. But but anyway, he he was he. I read his his um, biography, and, and he started out in school. He would go to like a dollar store and buy a bag of bubble gum, and then charge the kids like a quarter a piece, and he'd make a fortune yeah. <laughs> reselling the bubble gum. Sure. So so yeah, there are kids who in school who would go buy a pizza, mm-hmm. you know, eight slices for eight dollars. Mm-hmm. And then maybe sell them for two dollars a slice. The story we had was one dollar a slice, yeah, but right, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd rather spend two dollars a slice of pizza than exactly than eat a cardboard hamburger. That's right, hmm. which will end up in the garbage anyway, or a soy burger. Well, the oh, problem is yeah. they weren't even allowed to have. They were having salads that, uh, you know, and and that that was an expensive salad. Yeah. Salads were expensive because of the. It takes a lot of. Uh, a lot to grow those plants. So it right, does. Let, let me, uh, and you, your point, well taken, that, that the organic stuff is very expensive. It is. It is it very is. expensive. Uh, yeah. All right, the top 10 things we mistakenly think will make us happier when we come back. Ooh, that okay. might, that organic, might. Organic salad. Organic salad. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for today. Times of sun and clouds. There'll be a couple of thunderstorms around the high 90 to 94. The partly cloudy skies tonight with a shower or thunderstorm in the area, though 72 to 76. A mix of clouds and sun tomorrow with a couple of thunderstorms around high 86 to 90. A Friday, more clouds and sun with a thunderstorm or two, especially in the afternoon, the high 88 to 92. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. need of custom screen printing, embroidery, or promotional items? Then look no further and come visit the brand new Legacy Team Sales. LTS is conveniently located off 17th Street next to Armstrong Homes in beautiful Ocala. We offer the best prices and highest quality products for your company, team, school, or nonprofit. Whether looking for screen printed shirts, embroidered polos, or travel team uniforms, you'll be sure to find it at Legacy Team Sales. Come visit our new 27,000 square foot facility. Our friendly and knowledgeable sales staff will assist you in every part of your custom purchase. LTS carries the hottest brands in the industry like Under Armour, Russell, Mizuno, Asics, Badger Sports, Gildan, Pacific, Ogeo, and many more. At LTS, screen printing embroidery is done in-house and we guarantee customer satisfaction. Stop by, give us a call, or check us out on the web at shoplts.com. Remember the name, LTS. At a recent Alzheimer's fundraisers hosted by Hawthorne Village, Wanda, the Alzheimer's mascot, was brazenly abducted. Palm Garden of Ocala is being considered a center of interest based on the ransom note cleverly disguised on the center letterhead. Local officials are conducting an in-depth investigation to learn how to help pay Wanda's ransom or join the Ocala Alzheimer's Walk on September 9th called Jan Marino at Palm Gardens, Ocala, 854-6262. All right, 23 minutes after 8 o'clock. Isn't it cool that we have a celebrity coming in? I, yeah, I, I'm, You know, cool. I am a very starstruck person. I get starstruck with people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Don Nottingham is, is such a well-known name. He's huge. And um, he's coming in in just about an hour from now. Yeah. I, I, when he was here once before, we had a couple of guys that uh, came in just to get his autograph. Yes, so. exactly. That was pretty exciting. You, Gail, what would you do if you had that fame? You could use that fame for something. You could, you could, I mean, Don is using his fame, so I'm not, uh, yeah, but I mean, you could, I don't know, you could s- sign a ball and, and give it away and, and somebody could auction it, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. Which I'm sure he's done yeah. many times, mm-hmm. yeah. Just think about how few people there are that, uh, that in this world, who another person wants their autograph or to shake their hand. Right, right, right. You know, it's pretty rare. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty rare. And that might be one of the things we mistakenly think will make us happier, is fame. So I'll just throw that one in there. And none of them are school teachers. <laughs> none of them yeah. are school teachers. Yeah, none of them. Very few of them are doctors, unless your name is Dr. Oz, maybe, or Dr. Phil. Or, or, or what's his name, the guy running for president? His name just went right out of my Ben brain. Carson? Yeah, Ben Do- Carson. Dr. Carson, yeah. Or Dr. Ruth. <laughs> yeah, she's got a lot. Can you believe that? Yeah, well, you know, what sex does for you. All right, here's okay. number 10 then, of the 10 top things we think will make us happier. Number okay, 10. I'm glad it, we changed the subject because uh, I, I didn't <laughs> want the topic to be, what sex does for you? <laughs> <laughs> number 10 is a home theater. It's true. I've often thought I want a home theater, but it's true. Once I had it, it would just sit there. I would never use it. Uh-huh. Uh, you came close yeah. one time. You had surround sound. I did have surround sound, yeah. In your house. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's a tool. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, all right, I got you. But it is, it can be overrated for the expense if you, especially back in the day when all that stuff was really expensive. Now it's all pretty cheap. But uh, yeah. Uh, number nine, winning the lottery. Some people think that'll make them happier. Uh, you know, I'd like to take that chance. Would <laughs> <laughs> yeah. make things you know, I'd easier. I'd like to take the chance. Let's let, let me be your experiment. If you want to, <laughs> so give me give me anywhere between five hundred thousand to fifty million dollars, and let me see if that makes me happier. <laughs> you want to take that? You want to do that? Let, let, let's that social let's experiment. Can I can I take you through the 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 dialogue that made? Because I can't I can't do what you're actually asking me to do, but I can take you through the no, dialogue. No, no, no. I need an actual. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but if you did, but here's the you dialogue. You may not hear from me for a while. <laughs> so you'll be happier. Fifty million. I'm going to buy an island. <laughs> there you go. And you're happier on an island somewhere. I don't know. Maybe I, again. Larry, it's for the social good. I'm doing the experiment. <laughs> All right. I'm taking one for the team by taking your fifty million dollars. All right, number That's eight. Right. Get that crowdfunded. The number eight. <laughs> That's right. The, the number eight thing that you think it. will make you happier, that you mistakenly think will make you, is a new hobby. You know what I need? I need to collect more stuff. <laughs> you know, it depends. I, I think, and and I have a buddy and I. We we talk about this kind of thing all the time. As a man, you have to have at least one thing that you don't do with anybody else in your family. You can't do it with your wife, you can't do it with your kids. You have to have something that's all you. Um, and and you can't have three, you can barely have two, but you have to have at least one thing that you do all by yourself. And mm -hmm. you hope that that's a positive thing and not drinking. I would um, think so. But uh, yeah, 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 I think you need at least one thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not and, disagreeing. And that, and anybody says, oh, I'm going to take up sewing, and you've never sewed a day in your life, I think that's foolish, because I think a good hobby is organic. <laughs> it's something that you discover. Well, and, and, so. and yeah, I've, I've, I've often, you know, fantasized about being the guy with the model railroads, which, I, I, I mean, your, Robin's brother has a huge model railroad, and it looks fun. I don't know. It just does. Uh, number number six. Yeah, I bet you he did that organically. He started when he was five. <laughs> he did. Yeah. He was two years and old honestly, when he got too. his first Lionel train. So he was two. There you go. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Hey, um, nothing makes me happier. I mean, I can have the worst day ever. Like yesterday was a horrible day. Going to the Humane Society and sitting with one of the dogs. And we just sit by ourselves, and it just brings me so much happiness to just get away from the world and just do something that you love. Well, you go. Well, that's probably genuine. Yeah, th these other things are, I think, more in the superficial line. Yeah, that's more on the yeah, push side. You rich, yeah. But it makes you rich inside. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. But all of yeah. a sudden, if you start liking cats, then, you know, because you want to <laughs> like cats, that's not going to work. Well, and speaking of cats and dogs, here's number seven. Number seven is placing importance on labels. So if you insist on having a pedigree, then, then you might not be as happy as you would have been with a mutt. That's right. Or if yeah. you insist on wearing there Nikes, you, you might, you know, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Between 1950 and 2004, the average American house ballooned from 983 square feet to 2,384 square feet. And we're not happier. So more living space is not necessarily equaling more happiness. It's better than living with the in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> A man cave is happy. You're happier in a man cave than you are with a 2,000 square foot home. Whatever. Yeah, because you're by yourself. So you have to have a man cave inside your. That's home. right. That's right. Uh, number five is a job you hate. Of course, nobody wants a job they hate. Yeah. yeah. Number four is, and I guess this is for the single people. Date night ultra kill. This is where you take your date to the very expensive restaurant just to. To supposedly have a better time when you could have had just as good a time of five dollars bowling. No, oh, yeah. yeah. You can do that Lot married though. I mean you can have date Lot nights when you're married. That's true. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh number three of the things that we mistakenly think will make us happy is a, a Visa black card. I guess that's the one without limits. Is that right? Oh my. Number two is a cool car. A non-profit charitable organization. That's not been my future. <laughs> <laughs> number two is a cool car, and number one is home ownership. Although you have to live someplace, and I guess I'd rather own it than rent it. I don't know. There you go. So, we're at the end. Oh. 
The music is playing. <laughs> we need to find out where the blood mobile is. Kmart in uh, Bellevue and Walmart Wedgwood Lowe. Kim, Kmart and Walmart, the two competitors. Nice. Gail, have a great day. Go donate blood on, on the boulevard. Life South is next door to the Cascades. Thank you, Galen. All right. Thank, thank All right. you, guys. Bye. News ready to go. I'm Pam Puso. Dow futures may be soaring, but there's no telling what will happen on Wall Street by the close. Global markets are still struggling. China has cut interest rates to try and stabilize things, but it seems investors are still worried about the long term health of the Chinese economy. Fox News ready to go. Simon Owen, over the past six days, the Dow has shed 1,900 points. He's charged with terrorism, the man accused of attacking a high speed train bound for Paris. When he's sentenced later today, Colorado movie theater shooter James Holmes will get life in prison. For two days, victims spoke to the court, many demanding no mercy for James Holmes, some critical that the jury didn't vote to give him the death penalty. District Attorney George Brockler said he wished he could ask the court to sentence Holmes to solitary confinement in a room full of pictures of his victims, but he can't. Fox News ready goes Jessica Rosenthal. Fox News, we report, you decide. There's more to Fox News Radio than meets the ear. Go behind the headlines and join the conversation on the hottest stories of the day on the Fox News Radio Facebook page. Be a part of the Fox News Radio Facebook fan community. Post comments and tell us your opinions. See behind-the-scenes photos and videos and post your reactions to the stories that matter to you. Click the like button on Facebook and connect with breaking news and features like Fox in the Fast Lane, House Call for Help, and more. Go to Facebook.